Success in sales, as I've seen over the last couple of days, sometimes seems like a bit of magic. So we thought tonight we'd bring some world-class entertainment for you, who's going to do some, some magic. World-renowned illusionist and mentalist Wayne Hoffman is going to join us. But first, we're going to show a video. When I was a kid, I just always had a really crazy imagination, and I was always into things that I couldn't explain, um, the inexplicable, mysterious, and it was always something that I really had a passion for, so, you know, later, of course, naturally, I got into magic, and that's when I started studying sleight of hand and illusions, and then later, I studied psychology, and that's when uh, I started studying mentalism. I just never looked back, you know, I just began reading people's minds and getting in their heads. So now I have a show that combines them all, the mind candy. be. And, uh, you know, by being in my audience, you become part of the show, you know, you are the show. Uh, we brought in Wayne Hoffman, he's a mentalist and illusionist, yes! The magician Wayne Hoffman's here. Let's get ready to have our freaks freak. Please welcome mentalist Wayne Hoffman. He can not only read your thoughts, but influence them as well. Meet Wayne Hoffman. I know what people think. I know what they'll do before they do it, and I get in their heads and mess with them. <laughs> the favorite part is watching people's reactions watching them freak out. I get a thrill out of it. You know, I've taken 10 years out of my life and dedicated it to studying and reading and interacting with people. And just by looking at a person, the way they dress, move, act, and speak, I know exactly what's going through their mind at that moment. Is what I do a little bit mischievous? Of course. You know, I like to read the girl's mind and get her phone number. It's a little bit more my style. This is why I'm here. This is why I'm on Earth. To come out and freak people out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, can we give a tell us welcome to Wayne Hoffman? All right, all right. It's party time. You guys ready? Are we ready? Are we having a good time tonight or what? You guys having a good time? How about the food? Was the food good? How about the drinks? Yeah, bottoms up, drink up. It makes me a hell of a lot more entertaining. So tonight I want to dive right in with something interesting, and I need your help. Everybody go like this. Take your thumbs down and your palms out so the backs of your hands are touching, just like this. Excellent, excellent. Put your left arm over your right arm. If you are drunk, it's like this. Excellent, good, this table's with me. Now grab your fingers together. Go up, go down, and now try this. Take your time, you'll be there a while. No? Try this one instead. Everyone go like this. And go like this. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know it's a cheap way of getting an applause, but it works every single show. Look, she's still trying. <laughs> she's sitting there going, I'm gonna get this. Let me explain this evening's entertainment in a nutshell. Uh, a little bit of magic and a little bit of mind reading. Now, by round of applause, who has seen a magic trick before? Round of applause if you have, yes? Excellent. And by round of applause, who has had their mind read before? Four people. And they were all at the same party that night back in the 70s. Never mind. Because of the major imbalance, I'm gonna do a little bit more of the mind reading tonight. And I'm gonna get started with this paper airplane. I'm gonna throw this into the audience, and whoever, um, basically whoever it hits in the face, uh, you are going to grab the paper airplane, and you're gonna join me here on stage for a very quick, very fun mental experiment. So, heads up. That's you. Do you mind joining me? Let's give her a big round of applause, come out. 
<laughs> Come on right up here. We are going to get in her mind. Watch yourself on the stairs. And please, one more time, ladies and gentlemen, let's give her a big round of applause. Cool. Oh, what's your name? Andrea. Welcome to the party. I just need you right here. One more big round of applause for her. Come on, give it up. She's going to help me out. Now, do me a big favor. Clear your mind. That was easy. All right, good. That means you're relaxed. Now, I want you to just clear your mind completely. Don't think of anything. And up. In, uh, into the microphone here. Walk up to the microphone. And please name a random number between one, and I'll give you up to 100. Anything that pops into your mind, I want you to say it out loud. Eight. Eight. Now, is eight important to you? Is that the number of husbands you have, or is it something random? No, I was number eight of nine. You were eight of nine children, so busy parents. All right. No time to learn magic, I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. You'll notice I told her, and I instructed her to name something at random. However, she subconsciously named something actually important to her. And most of us do these subconscious things all the time without knowing. And in fact, tonight, I knew this was going to happen. And I knew you were going to say the number eight. Thank you. <laughs> all the drunk people are like, yeah, how did he know? That's all right. Well, let me explain, ladies and gentlemen. I can prove it. You see, prior to every show, I make a paper airplane to throw into the crowd here, into the audience. And you know how every plane has a name, right? You have the Boeing 747, uh, an Airbus 320. Um, those are the only planes that I know. But there's always a name and a number for every plane. Well, I name my paper airplanes. You see, just because it's a paper airplane doesn't mean it can't have a name. So prior to the show, very small on the wing, I print a name and a number really small on one of the wings. Before I do anything else, for the first time, please tell everybody your first name. Andrea. Andrea, Wayne officially, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, here's the weird thing. If uh, I told you that your name, Andrea, and the number eight was printed on that plane behind me, would you believe me? No. I appreciate your lack of confidence. <laughs> I want you to do me a favor. Go over there, pick up the plane that hit you, and on the wing, on the other side, read what's printed there. Uh, Wayne 45? No, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, go ahead. What's printed there? Andrea 8. It says Andrea 8. Let's give her one more big round of applause. Very good. Now name, name a vegetable. Eggplant. Eggplant. Now, Obviously, that's completely random, right? That was your choice to name that. People would name something completely different. Well, here's the weird thing. In that same category, I have a prediction for the person you're about to hit. So I'd like you to take this plane, and to be sure we don't aim for someone at your table, I'd like you to aim in this general direction, and I, uh, over here, and just chuck it out into the crowd. And whoever it hits or whoever it's closest to, we have a little prediction for it. That's you. <laughs> He's busy bootlegging the show with his camera. That was... He almost, he almost dropped his phone. <laughs> it's okay. Now, uh, the vanishing plane trick. Name a vegetable. Potato. Potato. And your name? Rob. Rob. Now, I want to make sure this is very clear. We don't know each other, Rob, correct? No, no. You look very pleased of that fact, Rob. <laughs> well, here's the weird thing. In other words, we didn't prearrange this, correct? I don't know you personally. Well, Andrea, remember how I told you I have a prediction for the person you're going to hit? Prior to the show, I wrote something down on a little post-it note, and I placed it inside of my shoe, knowing what would happen. Don't worry, my feet are clean. I'd like you to step over here to the microphone. I'd like you to unfold that piece of paper. <laughs> you didn't smell it, did you? And read, please, what's printed there. Potato Rob. Potato Rob. Let's give both of them a big round of applause. Thank you so much for helping me enjoy the rest of the show. Keep it going, folks. Come on. Let's keep it moving and grooving. So many things, so little time. Andrea, Rob, and I have been practicing that for months. Not really. So a few years ago, I got a phone call from NBC, the television network, and they had heard about the weird things that I was doing around the world, 
and they asked me to come on a television show for five weeks on live television. And the TV show got rebroadcast around the world. They told me that the show was live, and the things that I had to do were going to be live in front of uh, an American audience, about 9 million people, and they said, do whatever you want. <laughs> and I, of course, I freaked out, but because I had to come up with stuff. And for me personally, I wanted to do things that had never been done in television history before. So I came up with an idea. I needed inspiration, so I found a book called Exploring the Unexplained, and in this book, there was a write-up on the connection between twins, fraternal twins, identical twins, and the weird bond that they have with one another. And in there was a story of a set of twins that were separated at birth in the 1980s, right? And these guys grew up to be in their 40s having no clue they had a twin brother. Well, a university found them and independently interviewed them and asked them questions about their life and found these amazing coincidences. They both married a woman named Linda, they both divorced Linda, and they both remarried a woman named Betty. They both had one son, and both of them named their son James Allen. They both had one dog, they both named their dog Max, they both got into woodworking and both built a white circular bench around the one tree in their backyard. They s drove the same year, make, model, and shade of blue of Chevy. They smoked the same brand of cigarettes, wore the same types of glasses with round frames, wore the same types of shirts with two pockets in the front. They were both left-handed. And the list goes on and on and on. Their lives were almost identical and they had never met. Now, in researching this, a lot of my colleagues said, well, it's obviously genetic. That's why they're doing these similar things. They have the same genes. Well, here's the problem, folks. In, in my research, I have yet to find the gene in your body that makes you flush the toilet before you take a dump. So. I wanted to find out what this connection was. Now, let me ask all of you a question. You probably know what I'm talking about. Did you ever think of a person, and just as you're thinking of that person, maybe someone you haven't talked to in a while, your phone rings, and it was the person you were just thinking about? Round of applause if you've had that experience. <laughs> of course. See, it happens to all of us. So I knew it had to be something beyond just genetics. So tonight, I'm gonna show you the result of all of this study. Now, if we could bring up these slides, I'm gonna show you some slides up on the screen. In there was also a write-up on the connection between um, uh, various sets of twins. Now, my original concept was to do this on the television show, and I was gonna use these ladies. This is part of my private photo collection. <laughs> but I realized I had to do more research after reading about these guys the co-founding editors of the Guinness Book of World Records. They were twins. Now, on November 27th, 1975, one of the twin brothers was shot and killed in London, England. And at that exact moment, over 30 miles away, his twin brother collapsed on the ground. At that exact moment, his brother was shot, almost as if he could feel or sense that his brother was shot. So after all this research, I realized I needed to do more and study this more before I presented it on live television. And I ended up doing something completely different, but I promised myself that after the show, I would perform the routine you're about to see in my live theater shows. So if you're ready to see something weird, make some noise. Are you guys ready? Awesome. Now, before I go any further, I ask every, every show, uh, and we don't need them, but it does help if, if there are. But are there any twins in the room where both of you are here? It's very rare, and, and I doubt there are. No? So what I need to find are two people that have a connection, whether you're married, co-workers, whether you're related in some matter, whether you see each other every day. <laughs> two people sitting at the same table, and just so you know what you're getting yourself into, all you'll need to do is stand here and do various things. Do we have some volunteers? Are you, uh, if you are volunteering, just wave your hand. <laughs> There's one, uh, it's a puppet act. Kinda, sorta. Do we have volunteers here? You're standing, yeah, are you volunteering each other? Yes, how do you know each other? Wow, would you mind joining me on stage for something excellent? And exciting. Do you want to? Yes? They're gonna do it. Let's give them a big round of applause. Come on down. We are gonna see exactly.
exactly how connected these two really are. Tonight, we're going to get in their heads and do a little experiment and see if we can twist our minds. I want you to be very careful on the stairs on the way up. And this round of applause is for you. Welcome. You can step over here. Awesome. Welcome. What's your name? Luke. Luke. And? Michelle. Michelle. Awesome. Luke, if you don't mind, I'll ask you to just stand right here. Michelle, here. Perfect. And uh, you, met, you said 15 years ago? Yeah. Yeah? So a 15-year connection of any kind will yield amazing results. Now, let me explain. You have an easy job. In a moment, the two of you are going to do simple things, like I'll have you hold out your arm, or you'll hold up numbers so the audience can see, like one or two. Very, very simple. The catch is that your eyes will be closed. In a moment, I'm going to have you close your eyes. The reason being, I don't want the two of you to be able to see one another. I want you to be able to just hear my voice, and I don't want you to know what the other person is doing. Uh, so, step one, I'd like you to face each other. And I'd like you to memorize what each other is wearing right now. Take a look at their shoes, dress, the color of his tie or the type of jewelry and the color of jewelry she's wearing. Memorize as much detail as you can because in a moment when you close your eyes, what you're seeing right now is what I want you to be able to visualize, okay? Excellent. Perfect. No? You're good. Now, Luke, I'm going to ask you, if you don't mind removing your jacket, and I'll ask you to place it right here. We have this nifty mic stand coat hanger just for you. And if you don't mind as well, could you roll your sleeves up to about your elbows? Now, you have that image locked in your mind, so when you close your eyes, you'll be able to see it momentarily. All you need to do is listen to the sound of my voice. You may hear the audience react. If this works... The audience is going to see something incredible, but you're not going to understand what's going on. I need you to ignore their voice, listen only to mine, and I will explain everything at the end. So get one last look. And now I want you to memorize how many wrinkles are in their outfit. You have 37 minutes to do so. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> the company is paying me by the hour, so take your time. I'm joking, I'm joking. But get one last look. And in three, two, one, close your eyes. Keep your eyes closed and listen to the sound of my voice. I want the two of you to take one deep breath in. Exhale and breathe normally. Drop your arms down by your sides, another deep breath in. Exhale and breathe normally. I'm going to ask that both of you hold out your left arm straight out, palm down. So, yep, just a little lower here, and you're perfect. Keep your fingers together. Another deep breath in. Exhale, and breathe normally. Picture each other's face. <laughs> you're doing an excellent job. Another deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe normally. Lower your arm down and place them in front of you. Interlock your fingers in front of you. Just interlock your fingers. Yep. Hand over hand. Perfect. Excellent. One more deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe normally. In a moment, I'm going to be taking an object. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Let's just say it's feathery, and I'm going to be brushing it on one of you. All you need to do is memorize where you feel it and how many times you feel it in each location. So this is all about your sense of touch. So for example, if I brush you two times on your right leg, in your mind you're just going to say to yourself, someone brushed me two times on my right leg, memorizing where you feel it and how many times. Now, there might be more than one place and more than one sensation. So what I want you to do is just uh, memorize everything that you feel. Nod your head if you understand. Yes? Excellent. Now, both of you can visualize the main stage and the screens. What I'll ask you to do is turn your body so, the, so your back is uh, to the screen. 
So the screens are behind you. Excellent. I'm going to ask both of you to hold out your right arm straight out, palm down. Excellent. Now, before I actually do anything to them, I'm going to connect what's known as an aura around their body. Some people claim there's an energy that surrounds all of us. And they say if you connect that energy, weird things will happen. So if you see shadows, ignore the shadows. But in a minute, if you feel anything, memorize where you feel it and how many times. I'm not doing anything just this second, but in a minute, you may feel some things. So memorize where you feel it and how many times. Picture each other's face. Ignore shadows if you see them. Take another deep breath in and picture each other's face. I'm going to ask you a series of questions starting right now. Keep that arm extended. Listen to my voice. Question number one. Question number one is as follows. If you felt me brush you somewhere in your arm or wrist, I want you to take your left index finger, your left pointer finger, and touch it and hold it to the spot on your arm where you felt that. <laughs> Both of them indicated the right forearm. Interesting. What I'd like you to do now is mimic the motion on your arm of how you felt it on your arm. Was it a tap on your arm or was it a brush on your arm? Show us. Brush? Interesting. I'd like you to drop both arms down by your side. You can relax. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Breathe normally. Keep your eyes closed because I'm going to ask you another question. If you felt that on your arm, as you indicated, I'd like you to think back and try to recall how many individual strokes I made on your forearm there. Was it once or was it twice? And when you think you can remember, I want you to hold your right arm high above your head so we can all see and hold up the number of fingers that corresponds to how many times you felt me brush you on the arm there show us if you're not sure take a guess once or twice what do you think take a guess if you're not sure twice twice right on the money lower your arm down keep your eyes closed next question if you felt me brush you somewhere on your head or your face I want you to take your right index finger and touch it and hold it to the spot on your face where you felt that. Yeah? Interesting. Hold up your hand. Show us how many times you felt it on your face. Just once. That's right. Drop your arm down. Next question. Now, ticklish brushes are one thing because we're not sure if we truly felt it or not because it wasn't very strong. No, I can't. So here's the question, a very simple poke or a tap. If you felt me poke you or tap you, if you can physically reach it, I want you to take your right index finger and please uh, try to touch your finger to the spot where you felt me tap you. <laughs> On your back. Keeping your eyes closed. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> it's weird, right? Clap for them, they're doing it. I'm just talking. Drop your arms down by your side. This is weird, isn't it? Now, I, in fact, you're doing so well. I'm, after 15 years, I'm going to try one last kind of thing here. I'm curious to see if it'll work. Now, they're not twins, and this is the level of twins, but I'm going to throw it in just to see if it works. So keep your eyes closed. If you feel something, just go with the flow. Just kind of go with it. If you don't feel anything, just picture each other's face. You're going to possibly feel something on your arm, perhaps not. But let me ask you a question. And this is the level of twins, so I expect that they won't get there. Um, if you felt me draw an X on your arm with a marker, if you felt me draw something on your arm there, raise your right hand above your head. Notice they're not twins, so it won't work. It's weird. It's the one area where genetic connection is important. So drop your arm if it is raised. Now, let me explain, ladies and gentlemen. They are right now in a very weird state of mind. It's very relaxed. Their eyes have been closed for a very long time. So let, let's recap. <laughs> a 
I don't care who you are, that's funny. All right, so we're gonna bring them back out. <laughs> I want you both to imagine that energy is gonna leave your body. Imagine it goes from your toes to your waist to your knees. Imagine that energy is just leaving your body. I want you to hold your right arm straight out, palm down. Excellent. Picture that energy leaving your body right now. Zap, and it's gone. You're gonna remember where you're at and what you're doing. Slowly lower your arm down by your side. In a moment, when you open your eyes, you're gonna feel refreshed and renewed better than you did before you even hit the stage. So slowly, 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 open your eyes and look at one another. Good morning! Let's give these two a big round of applause for helping me out. Now actually, don't go anywhere, because I wanna ask you some questions really quick. Remember, they have no clue what's going on. So very quickly, did you feel some things, yes? So brushes and, and such, yes? Absolutely. Okay. And you felt some things as well, yes? Sure. Okay, uh, you felt uh, on the arm twice, mm -hmm. like feathery brush, yes? yes? And uh, did you feel it on your face once? Mm -hmm. Like, kind of hit two places, but yeah, on your face one time? Yeah. And did you feel me take the mic stand and poke you in the back, mm -hmm. tap you once? Yeah. Okay, are you 100% sure? Sure. Absolutely, okay. And did you feel uh, brushes on the arm, yes? Yep. Feathery brushes on the arm, yeah? And uh, uh, on the face once? Yep. And did you feel, uh, let's see, oh, let me take that and tap you in the back with it one time? Yes. Are you 100% sure? Yes. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. The reason we're all freaking out right now is because I only touched one of you. And one of you was never touched at all whatsoever. We should let them sit down and never tell them who it was. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> it would be torture. No. Because you were so kind to help me, I'll let the audience spill the beans, so to speak. Uh, yes or no, did I do those things to him? Yes. Did I ever touch her? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I know. Did it seem real to you? Oh, uh, oui, wait. It's absolutely. Ça and it worked. It, 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 you felt these things, yes? Yes. 100%, almost like it's reality. You were in a living dream. You felt every single thing that I was doing to him in the, in the places and the number of times. The only thing that you didn't feel was at the very end, I did a, a little experiment for twins and I drew a little X on his arm, but you didn't feel it. But again, that's because you're not twins. Oh wait, other, oh wait, which arm was it? Was it this one? Oh yeah, the one. Did you rub it off? Did you? <laughs> Hang on a second, it was your left, let me see the inside of your left arm. <laughs> yeah, that X. Show this camera right here. Hold it up, keep it there. Boom. Weird, I don't know. Let's give both of these ladies and gentlemen a big round of applause on stage. Keep it going for them, come on. Sir, Luke, this is yours, I believe. Let me shake your hand. Thank you so much for coming up here and helping me. I appreciate it. Young lady, thank you so much. Mwah, mwah. I love the French, they kiss me everywhere I go. Give both of them a big round of applause. The French wheat is wild, wild. <laughs> I gotta bring more women up here for the kisses. This is great. <laughs> All right. Oh, by the way, there's a side effect from that. Next time you stub your toe, she's going to feel it, so be careful. <laughs> so now that I warmed up, are you folks ready to start the show? Let's rock and roll. Right now, here, tonight, uh, I'm gonna perform a segment of the show that I truly believe has taken me around the world. Uh, as of today, I've been to 43 different countries, and next week I will hit number 44. And I uh, expect that that will continue to climb, and I truly feel it's for what you're about to see. Right now, all of you are gonna think of something and concentrate on a thought that you have in your mind, whatever it may be, the name of a person, place, thing, name, number, and I'm going to try to figure out what it is that you're thinking. Now, not each and every one of you, but we'll get to a lot of you. So what I want you to do right now, if you have the ability to write down a word, phrase, or number, um, if you have a piece of paper somewhere, um, uh, receipt, jot it down. Now, we did hand out a bunch of index cards in the lobby. 
If you got an index card uh, in your possession, you're already set to go. You, you don't have to uh, worry. But if you have a cell phone, you can text a word or a number into your phone so you can see it. Now, one thing I'd like to point out. If you already have something written down or thought of or text in your phone, don't change it. Because if you change it, for a mind reader, that's like trying to hit a moving target. So I want you to stick with the very first thing that you have written or text or thought in your mind. Try not to tell the whole room or everybody around you, the table next to you, what you're thinking. I know it's very tempting to say, I'm thinking of poop. Let's see if he gets it. <laughs> I know it's tempting. But try not to share it with the whole room. Preferably, maybe only one person, maybe two at the most. But it's okay if you tell someone. Just don't tell the whole room. What I'm going to do is just jot down whatever impressions and thoughts come to my mind. If I say something that rings a bell to you, something related to your thought, and you think it might be yours, all I'm going to ask you to do is wave your hand like this so I can see where you are. You don't have to come on stage. You can remain in your seat. And I'm going to attempt to figure out specifically what it is that you're thinking. So everyone concentrate. If you have something written down on the back of a card or something, an index card, a business card, take it out. Stare at it. If you have something in your phone, text it. Look at it now. Concentrate. Stare. Think. Okay, let me start from the top. Where is the person with the initials CL thinking of a pet that they had in their past, particularly a horse? If that makes sense to you and that's your thought, please raise your hand. We're going to start there. Yes, here? Just stay in your seat. Concentrate. Have you told anyone at your table what you're thinking or no? Just one. That's fair. Think of it now. Now, did you almost think of a different horse's name and then you went for this one or did you go right in for this? You thought of two? Yes. You thought of two, yes? Yes. Cool. What's your first name and where are you from? Uh, my name is Cynthia Ledlow. I'm from Austin, Texas. Austin. I love it down there. Sixth Street, I think it is. Yeah, Party town. Yeah. South by Southwest. Love it there. I'd like you to concentrate on your thought now. And you've only told one person this. And by the way, he doesn't believe that you're going to get this. Well, I, you know what, quite Frank, who, the, the gentleman next to you, we'll yeah. see. I don't know. Concentrate on it now. Think of it. You thought of two. I'm getting a letter H. Does it begin with the letter H? Yes. Keep thinking. She's freaking out. <laughs> I'm seeing almost like it's two words. I want to, because I keep seeing, is it something along, I want to, not bear, but boy. Are you thinking of a horse that you have in your mind named Honey Boy? Oh, my gosh. I'll take that as a yes. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> you can grab a seat. Let's keep it moving. <laughs> I'm sensing something right now, and I don't know where in the room this is coming from, but where's the person thinking of, where's the person thinking of the name of a street that they grew up on? If that's your thought, I believe the initials are HD or something close to it, if that makes sense. If that's your thought, uh, please raise We have a gentleman right here. If we can get him a microphone right here, I think you have some fans. <laughs> you have friends. If you need a ride home, they're all in here. Grab that microphone. Just tell me your first name and where you're okay. from. Uh, Toronto. And your first name? Hanif. Hanif, think of it now. Concentrate on it. Have you told anyone around you, yes or no? No. So you should be the only person that... And you, the street that you're thinking of, again, just to clarify, I want to make sure that this is, not, this is something you grew up on or some, from your past. In other words, you don't currently live there, correct? Yes. Okay, so I couldn't look at your driver's license and figure this out. Concentrate on it. Okay, I'm getting something kind of visual. It's weird because I'm not seeing something related to... I usually get a street sign, but I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing a monument, or actually I should say monuments. Does that make any sense to you at all? Just tell me the name. I'll tell you what... <laughs> <laughs> I can't pump him for information. I can't get anything out of him. He won't even give me a clue. I'll tell you what I'm thinking, and I'm going to cross my fingers because... Um, it, oh, man, I'll just go with my gut instinct. I'm seeing the name of a city in my mind and not a street, but it's also a street, but more particularly a road. Uh, are you thinking of a place you lived on Cairo Road? I'm sitting down. Yeah, that's a yes! We got him! Keep it going, come on! 
Let's keep going. Now, I know this is unbelievable. I know. It's, very, it's wild. I'm getting a sense of this. Where's the person, where's the person with the initials, I believe, C, G, thinking of something that they had to eat today? If that makes sense to you, just wave your hand. Is there a person? There's a person back here. I'm also sensing, where's a person thinking of their favorite movie? I believe their initials are J something, perhaps JW, I think it is, if that's your thought. There's a person here, too. So if we could get her a microphone, we'll go over here if we could get him a microphone. This is like call waiting. Everybody keeps beeping in. It's crazy. Oh, yes. Excellent, excellent. Here we go. Back here, just tell me your first name and where you're from. Céline. And where are you from? Montreal. Montreal. Concentrate on it now. Because I'm getting two things. Time out. She's beeping in. Right here. What's your name and where are you from? Jackie from Toronto. Jackie from Toronto. Think of it now. I'll tell you what, young lady, you can have a seat for a moment. I don't want you to keep standing. Concentrate here. Have you told anyone around you what you're thinking or no? Yes. How many people? One. Excellent. Think of it now. I'm getting a letter S. Does it begin with a letter S? Yes. <laughs> She's freaking out already. <laughs> don't urinate wet yet. Just wait till the end. <laughs> here we go. I'll tell you what, I'm not familiar, I'm only getting two words. I feel like two words are really standing out in my mind. Something with an L and something with an S. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Think of those two words now. <sighs> yes or no in a loud, clear voice. Were you thinking of the words silver linings? Yes. Weird. Give her a round of applause for helping me. This is wild. Now, you know what? If you can, can you give her the microphone again? Uh, uh, now, I want to, you said your name was Jackie, correct? Yes. I don't know you personally, correct? We don't hang out together in Toronto. No. We're not related. Uh, I didn't pay you money to lie to everyone here. Uh, we don't date yet. <laughs> Correct? Not yet. All right. <laughs> I want to point something out. I know how unbelievable this is, and a lot of people will say, oh, these people were paid off. They're part of his production. They tour with him. Or, oh, there's, there's uh, secret cameras hidden that can figure out what you're thinking and so on and so forth. If anyone in this room can prove that fact to be true, I'll give you $1 million. And that offer has stood for my entire career. No one here is a paid assistant or stooge, and no electronic devices are used in order to obtain this information. What you see is what you get. Concentrate. Everyone, think. Now's your chance. If you don't believe it, concentrate. We'll see if I can get your thought. Think. I keep, I keep getting honey boy. You can stop thinking now, ma'am. <laughs> and whoever is thinking of their ATM pin number, um, thank you. I'll meet you on the dimly lit sidewalk outside. <laughs> Concentrate now. Where's the person with the initials? It's either, I'm sensing either E-H or E-M. I'm not sure. Thinking of a time. A time. Raise your hand if that makes sense to you. A time. I think there's a hand in here in the darkness. If we could get a microphone over here to her. And again, if you do have it written or out, please hide it. I don't want you to think that the gentleman with the microphone has anything to do with this. Just tell me your first name, please, and where you're from. Liz from Toronto. Toronto. Welcome to the party. Um, have you told anyone around you what you're thinking or no? No, I've not. Excellent. Think of it now. Concentrate on it. First of all, is, I'm getting a weird sense. Is this the time your daughter was born? Yes. Now, you didn't write down time my daughter was born particularly, right? No. Concentrate on it. Is it in the 11 o'clock hour? Yes. Think of it now. Is your daughter here today or no? No. I wouldn't imagine so. Think of it now. And you haven't told anyone in the room yet? No. Okay, think of it, please. It's in the 11 o'clock hour. Is it 11 a.m.? No. I'm sensing then it's 11 p.m. <laughs> Am I correct? <laughs> you are. Is it p.m.? Awesome. <laughs> think of it now. One of my favorite numbers, I'm a... Uh, Big fan of certain sports players with this number. Was she born at 11.23 p.m.? Yes, she was. Fantastic. Give her a round of applause, please. It's crazy, right? I told you. This is, I surprise myself sometimes.
Keep thinking. We'll do a few more and then I'll move on. Something like this. I don't know what, I keep getting thing, and this, sir, I cannot say that. <laughs> There's just certain things I can't say in a show like this. All right, concentrate. Even people in the cheap seats in the back. Think. <laughs> think. I'm sensing now, I don't know what this is. Where's the person with the first initial of D, and they're thinking of their mother's middle name? If that's your thought, raise your hand. I hear laughter. That would be you. Excellent. We're going to come to you with a microphone. He will. And once he gets to you, I just want you to tell me your first name, and I'd like you to tell me where you're from. But don't give me any details about what you're thinking. Um, now, ladies and gentlemen, I know this is almost too incredible to believe. This is just a culmination of a lot of study and evidence of absolutely no social life. <laughs> so... Your first name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Denise. I'm from Vancouver. Excellent. Think of it now. Weird question. Does somebody in your family share the name with, the, uh, with, with your mother or not? Because that would help me get in your head if they do. No? No. Okay. Then I want you to just think of the letters and the spelling. Okay? Think of it now. This is extremely difficult, and I don't know why. I'll tell you what, does it, does it have four letters in it? It does. Because I'm getting four places. Was her middle name, is it middle? Like it sounds like a first name almost, but I'm going to go with my gut instinct. It was your, uh, 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 it's one of two. Was, is your mom's middle name Mary? It is. Oh, all right. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> It was either Marie or Mary, but it was, you said four letters, so I'm going to stick with it. It's weird, right? Let's keep going. I'll try a few more, and then I'll have to move on. If I don't get to you not, tonight, it's not because I don't love you. It's just, quite frankly, we don't have enough time to do uh, a thousand people. So concentrate. Where, I'm getting two things at the same time here. Where's the person thinking of the name of a car that was one of the first cars they ever owned or drove? If that makes sense to you. I don't know, initials, maybe J something, uh, if that makes sense to you, You're one of the first cars here. And also, remain standing, if we can get him a microphone, where's the person, and I won't say it out loud, because uh, I don't want the whole room to know, but where's the person that put down their phone number and their initial, I believe begins with the letter M, M something, perhaps MC, but I'm not sure, M, and you put your phone number down. If that makes sense, again, I won't say your phone number out loud, but if that makes sense, just raise your hand. Not the area code, but the first three begin with a six. Is there a, a person? Oh, here? If we could also get her a microphone as well. Give these gentlemen running around with the microphones a big round of applause, please. <laughs> They're getting their exercise tonight. I told these guys, I sprung this on them. I said, you guys are going to have to run around, and I don't know where the people are going to be. It's whoever's thinking. So first here with the vehicle, your first name and where you're from? Uh, my name is John, and I'm from Toronto. Toronto. A lot of folks from Toronto. Excellent. Think of it now. Now, again, just for clarification, uh, this is an old car. Was it, uh, just answer this question. Was it the very, very, very first car you owned or no? Yes. Okay, concentrate on it now. We'll also, uh, often have an emotional connection with that very first car. Typically, men seem to especially have that connection, so it's, it's easy to kind of pluck things from their mind. But I'm getting that, again, there, there was like two cars in your mind that kind of flip-flopped for a second before you committed to this. Concentrate on it now. Here with the phone number, does it end in the number three? Does it end in the digit three? Yes. Keep thinking. Sir, think of it now. I'm getting a letter. I see the back. It's the emblem. It's a letter H, so it's either a Hyundai or a Honda. Am I correct so far? Yes, you are. Picture it. Was one of the windows broken in the vehicle at any point? Like it, it wouldn't work or it was broken? No. Okay. I'm um, trying to think. Did you ever crash the vehicle, God forbid? No. Not that you can recall. I'm trying to get emotional. Uh, let me just try to get it visually. Picture it in your mind right now. Yes or no in a loud, clear voice. Were you thinking of a Honda Civic? Yes. Cool. Give him a round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. Wild. That's weird. So we're going to try one more. 
The young lady here, just for the sake of time, because I have to move on, please tell me your area code. 905. 905. Think of the rest of it right now. Do you have your phone with you and turned on? Yes. Is it on ring or vibrate or? Vibrate. Could you do me a favor and grab your phone wherever it may be and turn it on ring? <laughs> and uh, yeah, just grab it and then once you have it, take your time. I'd like you to turn it on ring and I'd like you to turn the ringer all the way up to the maximum volume it can go to, please. Once you've done that, uh, just grab, uh, yeah, you got it, excellent. And could you please again tell me your first name? Mary. Mary, thank you, I need to know what to program in here later. Oh. <laughs> Mary, concentrate on your thought right now. I gave you, it was oh. 965 area code, you told me that much, the rest is for me to figure. No, 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 905. no. 905, sorry, no, yes, 9. No, I thought you meant my area code where, <laughs> no. That's okay, the the, okay, let's skip let's this. Let's start again. This is very important. To, so if, if, if you don't know what you're thinking, I can't figure it out. <laughs> so it's all right. Let me ask you a question. The very first three digits to the cell phone that you're holding right there, the area code, the first thing that you would dial, not the main seven, but the area code. Um, what, what is the area code, please? 647. 647. 647. Think of the I'm feel, I, now everyone's thinking of their phone number. Stop that. <laughs> Six, four, seven. Is the next digit after that also a six? Yes. And then a three? Yes. Keep thinking. I won't say the rest. Just think of it. I have tons of things flying by in my mind. Do me a favor. Just look at me for a moment. Think of the whole thing, one after another. Start with 647 and then complete it in your mind. Don't say it, just think it. Perfect. I'd like you to hold your phone up to the microphone. And ladies and gentlemen, cross your fingers. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Answer that. And I want you to say, Wayne, you're amazing. Wayne, you're amazing. Wayne, you're amazing. <laughs> Let's give it up for Mary and everybody else who have participated in this evening's segment. Come on, give it up for them. Call you later. <laughs> Keep it going for everybody in the room that had a thought. Come on, give it up. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna go into the final segment. Are you having fun so far? Awesome. It's wild, right? Um, by the way, gentlemen, there'll be a lesson on how to do that phone number thing after the uh, show by one of the bars. Just find me. It's great. I'm an excellent wingman. <laughs> you don't even have to talk to her. Just point at her, say, the one in the red dress, and I go, here you go. Saves a lot of time. <laughs> I could see people going, what's this guy's name again? I want to get his website. Wayne Hoff, I got to contact him. All right. So tonight we're going to go into one more uh, routine, uh, and then I'll leave you. Um, and this one, particularly for me, is, is a special thing that I, I like to do. Um, and it, it, it takes me back to my past. Now, before I get into this, we cannot, uh, I, as a performer, cannot do a show alone. I did not just magically appear here. Um, there was a large team of people that helped uh, get me here and coordinate this massive effort. So please, everyone working lights, sound, your, your servers, uh, everyone that planned this, please give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Thanks, Len. There's secret ninjas in the dark working lights, sound, and camera, and they work very hard. So thank you, gentlemen, for helping me put on a show. Um, Every single person in this room is still the same person that they were when they were a child. Two things have changed. You've gotten older and you've learned things. People like to say, when I was a kid, as if you're a different person. But you're the same exact being that you were when you were a kid. 
And when you're a kid, you have an amazing sense of imagination and wonder. You can make a cardboard box into a castle. You have monsters that live under your bed. And then as we get older, I'm sure you're all well aware, you get stuck in routines where you wake up, go to school or work, come home, eat dinner, fall asleep, wake up, go to work, come home, eat dinner, fall asleep, get up, go to work, come home. And then maybe on the weekends, hey, let's have a drink. And then you go back Monday morning, get up, go to work, come home, eat dinner, fall asleep. How many of you, when you get in the shower, you have a routine that you do and you wash your body in the same order and you could do it with your brain removed and you wash in that order. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Right. You have your routine. How many of you have been driving somewhere, maybe a route that you take all the time, and when you get there, you pull up, you put it in park, and you snap out of something, and you wake up and don't remember a damn thing about that drive at all whatsoever. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. You see? If you ever wondered if you could be hypnotized and you've had that experience, the answer is yes, you can be hypnotized. Because in that moment, you hypnotized yourself. And I always hear people say the same thing over and over. They say, where did the years go? Where did the years go? That just seems like yesterday. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I figured out where those years go. They go in those moments when you flub your way through life and just do the action. And you don't live with excitement and you don't use your imagination, and you don't live with a sense of magic in your mind. Don't go through life hypnotized. Use the sense of wonder you had when you were a kid. Do something every day that scares the hell out of you, because if you do that, you'll be living a life filled with magic. You'll have new experiences. I wanna show you something. If we could bring up the slides. We like to compartmentalize our childhood, like I said, into a box and say, when I was a kid. Each and every one of us can go back in our minds and picture photos of ourselves. Maybe they're in an old dusty box. Well, this is a picture of me. That's right, ladies, that's the proper response. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but even younger, here's me. And notice I said me, not me as a kid. Right here, this is me. You may recognize me from the movie Children of the Corn. But anyway, this is me. Two things have changed since then. I've gotten older, obviously. Facial hair is growing. I've learned a lot. But I'm the same person. So what I'll ask you to do right now is take a moment, and I'll do it with you. I want you to close your eyes for a few seconds. Don't worry, I won't steal your cell phone. Picture yourself as a child at any age. Maybe recall a photograph. Picture yourself. You're still the same person. Slowly open your eyes. Two things have changed since then. You've gotten older and you've learned things. Well, right now, I'm going to help you recapture that sense of wonder, but I need your help. We're gonna do a little experiment. I have a glass of, what am I drinking, Pepsi. Raise your hand if you can see what's left of the Pepsi. Yeah? Excellent. Watch closely. <sighs> Who saw me consume it? That's reality. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we use imagination. I forget when I cracked this open uh, some, at some point during the show. I guess it doesn't really matter when. But who saw me drinking the can of Coke or Pepsi, sorry, during the show? Who saw that? Yeah, obviously, it's reality. And I'll hold it up to a camera right here. If you can, get a nice shot of that. Who can see that the can is crushed? Raise your hands. Keep it up if you can see the hole in the can. Obviously. Now, ladies and gentlemen, watch closely. I want you to stare at the dents in this can. You can watch the screen if you're in a good seat to see. And I want you to imagine, like a child, and imagine you can remove the dents out of the can. I want you to imagine and believe like you did when you were a kid. Believe we can take the dents 
out of the can. Imagine that every time my finger goes around this can, that we can go one minute back in time. Just believe. Start with the fact that the can is crushed and take the dents out. Just imagine the dents will slowly come out of the can. Who can see that the dents are coming out of the can, yeah? Now we still have a hole right here in the black and white dress. I want you to imagine that I can grab the hole and throw it to you, but I want you to believe that you can actually catch the hole. You ready? Chew up the hole, swallow it, and out loud say, the hole is gone. The hole is gone. Now if you believe something strongly enough, it turns into reality. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that can is resealed. Could you do me a favor, sir? Could you just join me on the stairs here? I'd like you to tap on that and verify that it's indeed resealed, yes? Yep. Excellent. You can grab a seat. Now I want you to refill the can with your mind. There's nothing in there yet. In fact, I can already feel it getting heavier. I can feel it. Listen. 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 There's some in there. Keep filling it. Go. Believe. That's completely filled. Now make it cold. <laughs> Why not? Young lady, could you join me right here on the stairs? I'd like you to feel this and tell me, can you feel it getting colder and colder? It's getting cold, is it not? Yes? Yeah. Be careful on your way down. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing for you to remember this evening, and that is imagination is extremely powerful. Cheers. And that's the end of my segment. You caught the hole so you can have the rest. How about that? A Pepsi for the young lady. And ladies and gentlemen, you were a treat. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> thank you again. Thank you. Uh, you guys are great, really. Thank you so much. This is a treat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>